Stabilize Naira and end corruption to unlock Nigeria's success, says Treasury's Deputy Secretary Adeyemo. And Nigerians to expect another hike in the price of petrol. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cohn. As President Bola Ahmed Tinubu is set to address the United Nations General Assembly in New York today on licit financial flows, asset return, um, U.S. Deputy Treasury Secretary Walia Deyemu on Monday advised President Bola Tinubu-led government to stabilize the Naira and fight corruption to unblock Nigeria's potential. Adeyemo, who is in Lagos uh, to improve U.S.-Nigeria economic ties, praised Tinubu for pursuing difficult and bold reforms and listed steps needed for the type of growth that Nigeria needs to create economic opportunity for the Nigerian people. Adeyemo also called for steps to shore up the integrity of the Nigerian banks and to reduce ability of criminals, terrorists and others to launder money through Nigerians, Nigeria's financial system. And he says that Washington stands ready to help Tinubu's government tackle challenges in this area. Well, joining us to discuss this is Babashala Adegui. He's a political analyst and also George Ashiru, who's the chairman of the Africa Democratic Congress, ADC in Lagos. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us and good evening. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here once again. Good evening, Mr. Ashiru. Glad to be here again. Great. Um, let me start with you, Mr. Shiri. Let's talk about, you know, where Nigeria's economy stands today. We've seen um, what has happened post the subsidy removal era. We've seen that um, the cost of living has gone up. We've seen that um, many companies are gradually looking at having to downsize. Um, transportation cost has more than doubled. Literally everything has hit the roof because of one statement. But then many have also said that this is where we were virtually going to, whether we liked it or not. But then um, how have we handled the post-subsidy era and how badly hit do you think the economy is? Um, <clears throat> I think if I were a strategist advising the new administration, I would have said that Immediately after taking office, usually there's a period that you may have disruption because of new policies, new ideas, and you don't have a cabinet yet. What I would have expected the president to do is to get the existing stakeholders in the economy, that is the big players and the big industries, and ask them, look, I need to take certain decisions. How will it affect your industry? If I, uh, if I increase the fuel price, your strategic plan from January, how will it affect it in June? Will it increase your employment? Will it reduce employment? Will it increase your cost and therefore you pay, tax, you pay less taxes? It is this lack of engagement that is actually the bigger problem. Policies come every time. But usually these are reactive policies. These are political decisions based on um, hearsay, based on or different political analysts giving different information over time. But engagement needs to come directly from those who are making those policies mm. with the people affected. Because the economy, 70% of the economy, is in the hands of the private sector. Mm. So when you're going to make a decision such as increase that will lead to the increase uh, in forex in, in exchange rate, therefore increase um, the, the price of PMS, and therefore cause inflation, you have to ask yourself, you will know for sure that taxation is going to reduce in the in the second half of the year because a lot more organizations are going to make less profit. So it is a matter of, you know, making a decision within, within the context or the ecosystem of, should I do what I believe to be politically right or should I do what I believe to be economically right? Hmm. And I think where we are right now is that the, 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 the medium is not very profitable for Nigerians. Um, let me come to you, Babashala. Um, the, the visit by Adeyemo, De obviously, is to strengthen our, both our political, bilateral tri um, you know, ties with the U.S. And, of course, Nigeria's president has been traveling all over to try to see how he can you know, bring more investments into the country. 
And just like um, Mr. Shiri say, there seem to not be like a, a an agenda, a, a, a strategy, you know, in dealing with what the economy has turned into. Many people would even blame Mr. President for where the economy is, but there are also those who say he inherited it. It's just that it got worse under him. Does the Tinubu administration have a plan from what you see? Uh, or let's talk about body language. We always talk about body language in this part of the world. Um, does the body language of Mr. President and his administration seem like there is a strategic plan in terms of managing the economy? Hmm. Once again, I want to say thank you. Um, based on the tie between the U.S. and the Nigerian government in respect of the bilateral uh, ties, I would say it's something that is not new. It has always been there. And inheriting economic problem, it has always been there right from the time I've always known Nigeria to be Nigeria. So, um, the coming of the present president actually came in with, uh, ushered in a lot of hope. But unfortunately, on the day he was, uh, on the day he was uh, inaugurated as a president, everything changed. For me, if you call yourself a president, you don't just come out and say something. You need to watch what you say. Now, two variables that determine the economy of Nigeria. Two variables, that is, the fuel and the exchange rates. You don't, in any economy sense, touch the two at once. Even if you are going to touch one at all, then you must do it gradually, not at once. Now it's telling on everybody. The issue on ground now, looking at the president, I will tell you, it's just promises. I have not seen anything to give me hope, apart from, oh, maybe the appointment of the technocrats. And don't forget, technocrats, when they get there, they get oriented, and uh, what you believe in them to say or to do will totally be different from what you'll be seeing them do. Um, as the you know finance minister saying that I, this is one of the best picks. I don't have any issue with that. They are all human beings. They are all Nigerians. As long as Nigerian blood is running in the veins, just expect anything. But I will tell you, if we are to go by the profile of the people that have been appointed by the president as ministers, as special advisors, out whosoever, I would say it has a good team. But the question is, how would, would, would the president be ready? To, uh, to execute every, uh, every recommendation from, from, from this, from them, mm. from all these people. Because whether you like it or not, they are also being affected by what is happening in Nigeria today. Mm. So that's number, number two. What is the plan of the president to solve the issue of this, uh, the fair price that is rotating every day? Mm. Now, I think the code that is about, it's now over $100 if, I, if I'm right. Definitely is going to tell on the fuel prices in Nigeria. Mm. Very soon, maybe we start buying fuel for 650, 700 because of this reason. Now, what are those factors that the government has, uh, the government has on ground for this, uh, for this to, 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 to stabilize this? That's number Number two, I have not seen the blueprint of the president, as far as I'm concerned. One thing I believe. Once you are inaugurated as a president to aid and you know the economic problem of this country, the first thing you need to do is to constitute a team that will look into the issues even mm -hmm. before you announce or you execute anything. Let them give you a recommendation. The only reason why you can tell me that that has been done is why to tell me that, oh, you've already done that even before the inauguration. But if you listen to the president very well, he said that it was not included in the uh, inaugural speech. Yes. That he included it by himself. In other words, he did not care. He, his own was, I must do it and let it go. And from the rumor we had, we said, we, we had that said, the, the subsidy was removed as a result of Dangote refinery that will start or okay, kickstart sometimes in July. And as a result of that, they had to remove it. Now the question is, has Dangote refinery started? Although it's a private... But the president has also promised, the president has promised that um, refineries will be... Um, our own refineries, uh, would one of them at least, maybe for Harcourt, would be up and running by December. December 31st, 2023. Well, I, I remember when the Ibe Kashuku 
Ibe Kashuku was the minister of petroleum, minister of state for petroleum. I remember the people, the subsequent minister of petroleum, they all gave a timeline on when all the refineries in the in the country will start working. We know the amount of money that has been allocated to those refineries. We know how the money has been allocated and nothing has come out, whereas there are, we have staff there that have been paid. Some people are retiring from refineries that are not working and they are being paid their pension or whatever gratuit at the end of the day, gaining from what is not producing. So if you if if they now tell me December 31, 2023, the Portacot refinery will start working. I will not say yes. I will just be sitting down and be looking at them and let us see what will happen. I, I will tell you nothing will happen by December 10, December this year. Many will call you a pessimist, but let me come back to Babashara and um, to um, <laughs> Mr. George Ashiru. Um, let me quote um, Adeyemo uh, on the Naira. He said, firstly, Nigeria needs a stable Naira. Unifying Nigeria's foreign exchange rate will also create the kind of microeconomic stability that is essential to attracting foreign investment. That investment that Mr. President is running after, he's saying we first need to stabilize the Naira. I know that you don't work for the presidency, um, but this question is, do we have, does this administration have what it takes to stabilize the Naira? How, where do we even start from uh, to begin with? Today, in the open market, no, the Naira goes for about 950-something, if not more. Where do we even begin to deal with this issue? Mr. Shiro, can you hear me? No. Okay, go ahead. Yes, I, yes, you don't have to be an economist to, to, to come to the conclusion that multinationals and big businesses, they make the business plans based on expected income from different operations all over the world. Mm. So so when you have uh, a foreign investor in Nigeria who makes a, a one-year plan for his business on the expectation that he'll be able to repatriate so much based on for every one billion naira what was revenues or, 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 or profits, he's going to be able to get uh, so much. And then you have at the end of the day, because of the uh, disparities in the plan and then the, the, the policies of the government, He's just taking away a quarter of what he planned uh, in the beginning of, uh, of the year. Of mm. course, no other investor is going to come back to Nigeria knowing that this is, these are, this are the, uh, the indices that we are, we are experiencing in the country. So when Adem says belies the, poly, the, the, the forex policy, he knows that businesses in America that want to come to Nigeria, they are holding on to that. They are holding on. They are saying, look, look, as long as... There is no consistency in the policy rate. I can make plans in my country. I can make plans in terms of every $100 million I want to send to Nigeria. I can get that $5 million at the end of every year. So and promises are promises. It doesn't change the fact that you are going to get less for the amount you originally put in for as long as the exchange rate goes up. That mm. is why you put business people in government. Technocrats should not be politicians who have been playing policies for 20, 25, 30 years and you expect them to come with business ideas and sense directly in government. We don't want people because they're popular. We don't want people because we have known them 20, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. They were there when things were going wrong. I do expect people that were there when things were going wrong to come and fix it because there's a new government. You should be looking at the likes of, of, of Elumelu to be in government. You should be looking at people who drive uh, employment, who drive, you know, but, 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 but sidebar, sidebar, Mr. Ashiru, Tony Olumalu was at, approached by some people uh, and, and recommended to be the CBN governor, and he said, God forbid. <laughs> so Actually, then, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't expect him to, 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 he's got everything he wants in life. Mm -hmm. I don't expect him to put all that in a political matter. But my, the point is, I'm making a comparison. Now, of course, patriotism is another issue. We have a lot of Nigerians that are not patriotic enough to want to serve. They are afraid to serve because of what they have in their kitty. In the United States of America, in also all these other countries, you have a lot of billionaires who have a lot of private business people serving their countries. They bring what they have. They can't go to war. So they bring their intellectual capacity into government. Mm. But the point I'm trying to make is that it is common sense for those who are in business. Some of the things we're expecting from political actors. And we're not getting those answers because the, the, the relationship between the businesses and the governance is still a stretch. There should be a non-stop town hall, non-stop meeting, non-stop. There should never be, oh, we're making a political decision. 
Labour wants to go into uh, they want to go to strike. So let's talk to them. You should be engaging Labour before it ever gets to the point where they want to go to strike. Mm -hmm. You should be talking to the to the actors. Now, the impact of it is this. The people who directly employ the majority of Nigerians are the ones affected by your policies. Mm -hmm. Government does not employ the majority of Nigerians. The private sector does. So if the private sector is hurt, the majority of Nigerians are hurt. And that's not politically wise. And it's not economically sound. Mm. And these things is what I call common sense. It's not politics. It's common sense. So mm. what I think the, uh, the president is doing wrong is that he's still focusing on making sure that, look, I'm pleasing everybody. I'm putting everything in the mix. There is no, he has a strategic plan that is on paper. But the implementation of it is different. You see, how you run a state is not how you run a federal government. It's a different beast on its own. Mm. And I said that in one or two for I said, look, you cannot run a, a Lagos state, for example, is the worst example of how you can say, oh, I run Lagos well, so therefore I run the country well. No, Lagos state is self-sustaining. Uh, Lagos state will always be self-sustaining, regardless of who, even if you put a monkey as a, as a governor of Lagos state, Lagos state generates enough of its own so resources to be self-sustaining. Fifth largest economy in Africa. So what you use as an example is Osho State. You, you look at uh, states in the northeast, you look at states in the south-south, and you say, how are they sustaining? How are they paying their salaries? How are businesses surviving there? Because they are failing, that's why the, the, the population of Lagos State is going to soar to 50 million in the next few years, because everybody wants to come to where it's happening. Now, what we have to ask the president to do is this. Go back and start engaging normal people, and not just having technocrats sitting with you every time. Engage the ordinary people, engage them state by state, and make sure that the policies that you are participating, uh, that they are participating with you on, is something they are carried along with. Mm. Once they're carried along, the chances are they will help you to implement it. Now, there's no way you can go back. Once you liberalize Forex, it's going to affect every single part of the Nigerian economy because we are not a productive economy. We're a trading economy. And most of what we trade, we buy from abroad. Mm. Let me, let me come back to you, Baba Shala. He's touched on something that is very interesting. Mr. President had said, um, what, before he became president, um, he said that he would continue from where his predecessor stopped. And again, that is a very daunting task. We've seen that Mr. President has also nominated a new CBN governor. And Adeyemo here also talked about the fact that government needs to articulate and implement a credible fiscal strategy that will provide the resources to make critical investments. That onus is on the CBN. We've also seen a directive by Mr. President that uh, all the backlog of monies in foreign exchange that we owe all these international airlines, we should start paying them. Um, do you see the CBN governor taking a U-turn of sorts? Because it's just it's one thing to put somebody at the helm of affairs, but then the system in, in itself, if it's already um, you know, rotting, then that man there will probably not be able to change anything. But what, what are your thoughts? Yeah, the CBN governor, the team actually has a lot, of, a lot of work to do in respect of the, uh, the Naira Valley. And, uh, and for them to get this done, they need to have uh, a, a serious meeting with the key government officials, most especially those in charge of the monetary policies in the government. Because the truth is, uh, fiscal policy, sorry. The truth is the fiscal policy actually determines the monetary policy. If the fiscal policy is not, uh, is not favorable and is not attractive enough for investors, then definitely it would affect the monetary policy. So for the CBM government, looking at this provide, the guy has worked in different places, and I think he, actually, he retired from Citibank uh, here in Nigeria. Uh, to an extent, I can say he would have had one or two relationships with the former CBN governors before him becoming, then definitely he must have also had our understanding of how the CBN uh, works. So he needs to say that they need to think of uh, uh, how to make things better and advise God president uh, necessarily because it, that is one of his jobs. He must advise the president for every decision the president is taking that will affect the economy because whatever the CBN governor does in respect of the Naira value, whatever it does in respect of the monetary policy, will definitely affect everybody. So, for Cardoso, one of the things he needs to do is to first of all check where did all this thing go wrong? Yeah. Where did they go wrong? Okay, how are we going to address this? Okay, then the next thing is how can we use the present policy 
that we have on ground, how can we use to attract investors into the country? Yeah. Because if these policies that are not revealed, definitely we are going to have a lot of setback in strengthening our Naira value. Mm. So they need to sit down and look at this. And they need not to be a political in anything. They need not to be political in anything. And every loopholes, every loopholes that underline that should be addressed because those are one of the things that is actually affecting the economy. For example, in December, uh, uh, was it December? Yeah, December last year, when the former player, CBN governor, announced that we should stop spending the old Naira notes and all of a sudden the uh, trucks, trucks of Naira were coming into banks to drop. What did they do? How were they addressed? What did they do to those that actually bought in those Naira? So all those things have to be looked into because for those guys to have a uh, stash of cash at home, definitely, definitely they have more than that somewhere else. There are some people that have even forgotten. They have some. So how are you addressing that? How many people have been arrested? Despite the fact that there is a policy in the PCB in, in all banks that nobody should deposit more than 10 million naira a day. No, in, uh, yeah, in cash. 10 million naira a day as a corporate uh, organization as a data. People individually were bringing cash into the bank and nothing was done. Look at all those uh, uh, um, mutilated cash. What happened? How many people have been arrested? How many people have been questioned? Nothing. So we need to look at all this. It's not a matter of changing the Naira note. I even learned that the Naira note by December is going to end. We stop the old the spending the old Naira. We start with the new Naira and nothing has been done. Because for me, since between January this year and now, I can count the number of new Naira notes I've set my eyes to see. Talk of the one that touched my hand. So if that is going to be another issue this December, it has to be addressed because if it is not addressed now, it's going to cause a lot of economy, uh, economic issues uh, by the end of December. So a lot of things have to be done. It, it, yes, uh, 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 improve on the, on the online payments, all these, uh, the virtual payment, improve on it. It's going to help. No, that's number, number two, then you need to work hand in hand with all the commercial banks. And on the forex, this thing, we have a lot of work to do. Remove ban on the 41 items that they, uh, remove, yeah, 41 items that have been banned by the federal government to accept. Mm. Once you remove that, I can tell you, and once you make it cash, uh, the dollar easily available, I can tell you a lot of things will happen. It will crash the market. Mm. It will crash the market. But if you are making it difficult for a lot of people to get access to it, I can tell you it will be more uh, difficult to get it. I, I, it's going to be at the high rate to get the dollar. So a lot of people need money to do a lot of things outside. That's number, number two. If you are licensing BDC, for now, I will say withdraw the license. Hmm. Withdraw the license. How, how will you do that? They have their dollar. They have all those things. No, but I'll buy, uh, buy our Naira from there. Keep our Naira. Let them have the dollar. If people are not getting the dollar to buy, I can tell you, I can tell you, they will bring it down. How do you do it? Banks, mandate the commercial banks to buy all those things from them at lower price. They will sell at lower price. You get? And for them, for people outside, as in the banks will sell at lower price, I mean, to individual to people, yeah. yes. And that will not, once that is being sold at lower price, definitely nobody will approach that bookie outside. Very true. Let me quickly, because my time is going, um, there's something um, I think Dr. Aldwogbe said years ago um, about the, the continued devaluation of our Naira, uh, that some guys from the IMF, you know, came and, and successfully were able to brainwash us to continue devaluing the Naira. Should we be revisiting this issue of how devalued our Naira is in terms of trying to strengthen the Naira? Should we look at, you know, how we can maybe reevaluate that whole devaluing? Because we've devalued the Naira so much so that it's, it's really worthless. I mean, I put it side by side with the Kenyan shilling. Sometimes it's embarrassing for me, and, and you know, um, but, but can can that issue be revisited again? He also talked about the monies that 
Are they more talked about monies that were realized from subsidy since we've removed subsidy? He is advising that these monies um, should go into physical and digital infrastructure, education, and you know, building the small business environment. But you also know where these monies have gone. Five billion for every state, no matter how many people are in the states, no matter how big or small the states is. And you've seen what happened in Oshun State, where a certain party chairman was fighting with a commissioner on sharing that same palliative money. So really, subsidy has been removed, even though we hear it's quasi. But uh, the, in handling these funds, uh, we really, are we going to see any change whatsoever? Uh, um, <clears throat> as long as we are a country that does not export more than we import, we are going to forever have to uh, have forex uh, higher than it should be. But as long as we don't earn enough foreign exchange in comparison to the amount of foreign exchange we spend, mm. then there will never be there will never be the parity that everybody is looking for anymore. Uh, the demand for forex is because we have a, what we call elastic taste in this country. People like to import everything because industries are not encouraged to produce the same things locally. When you produce locally. It will take it. No, no bank will give you a 20 year loan, 10 year loan until you become profitable. Everybody wants their money. You look at even uh, look at real estate. They want you to buy a 50 million naira house and pay in one year. You must be a thief to pay 50 million in one year for <laughs> middle class. Mm. I, I like that part uh, because you see, uh, these are some of the loopholes that need to be plugged. But go ahead. Sorry, we lost you for a second. Yeah, so, so those are the reasons why. We are constantly having to devalue. It is a, it's economic forces. Arbitrage is also there. So we are not producing. But look at China. Look at Korea. Look at Japan. At a point in their, in, their, in their economic lives, they devalue their currencies so that it will make their exports competitive. Mm. But we don't have anything to export apart from crude oil. And when we export crude oil, we use much more than we are going to get in paying for subsidy. So we understand the removal of subsidy. But if you do, if you're going to remove subsidy, you should at least stabilize the forex. You don't do the two at the same time. So for the foreseeable future, no matter what this government does, until we are producing and exporting more than we are importing, forex is always going to be high. That's simple okay. economics. Okay. But as long as it's demand, there will always be a demand for, I mean, demand for foreign goods and services. There will be a demand for uh, forex that the government cannot, uh, 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 you know, provide a supply for. Well, out of time, so Babashala, I'll, I'll just uh, allow you to wrap it up here. Um, the issue of labor going on strike and several other things that are already on Mr. T um, Tinubu's plate um, is, like I said earlier on, very daunting. Um, but how soon do you think we're going to see any changes whatsoever? Mr. President, for many, he's not celebrating 100 days in office. He's obviously going about his business. But there are people who are already looking at how well he's fared. Um, how soon down the road will we be seeing maybe um, the opportunity to breathe in the midst of all of this? Well, um, let's give the president six months. I would advise let's give the president six months to be able to assess the performance of the president, but the truth is, the president actually met a lot of uh, political, economic, social issues on ground, and uh, he has promised to do something. Hundred days is too short to actually do that. So I will say, let's give him six months. Let's see what we do. And for the NLC, NLC has the right to negotiate for incrementing welfare packages, but it is not a matter of incrementing welfare packages. The matter of also fighting for the purchasing power because that matters a lot than asking for yes. increment. Yeah. So let's just give the president six months to be able to assess the president better. All right. Well, Babashala Degui is a public affairs analyst and George Ashiru is the chairman of the African Democratic Congress, ADC, right here in Lagos State. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being here and thank you for having this conversation with me. Yeah, thank you. Thank for you. Us. All right. Great evening, everyone. We'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll be talking about the um, likelihood of an increase in petrol pump price. Stay with us. We'll be right back.